it's so good to see you. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my little living room, my digital living room. I'm Meg, the colorful minimalist, and I make videos to inspire people to be more of minimalists and to de-stress their lives. I'm gonna put on a little blanket because I like to be cozy when I'm on the couch. This blanket is from uh, Farm to Home, by the way. I'll put a link in the in the description. They like have all natural fair traded cotton products and um, very affordable and stuff like that. So I'll put a link below. So yeah, let's get to talking. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. Subscribe to my channel if you like minimalist content and uh, find me on social media. We could be friends on social media. I'll put links down below. Um, but this video is all about how to go from messy to minimalist in 30 days. I'm gonna share with you advice, I'm gonna share tips and tricks, I'm gonna share how to get into the mindset, all of that. Um, so yeah, let's just jump in and get started. Okay, so first off, you probably clicked this video because you wanna be a little bit more simple and embrace minimalism. I say this in every video, but minimalism looks different for everybody because everybody's in a different stage of life. Maybe you have kids, maybe you're single, maybe you love color. It's gonna look different for everybody. For me, I have two kids. I am working full-time at home. I recently quit my nursing job uh, to focus on my online business 100% and write courses and be a nursing author. So I am working from home and I actually have a home now because I was living in an RV for the last two years, which was wonderful for minimalism. Um, but the stage that I'm in now is I actually have a house and I have kids, so it's gonna look a little different. And I love color. So I might not look like some of the other minimalists on YouTube that are single and they wear the same thing every single day and <laughs> Their apartments are like black and white with minimal furniture. I try to keep everything simple and own very little and have no clutter, but I still like a little bit of clutter and I, I have furniture and I have plants. <laughs> so yeah, that is me. I want you to figure out what you want minimalism to look like for you. Do you want your house to be colorful? Do you want to look a certain way dress a certain way. I want you to create a vision board with your vision of where you want to be. You wanna put away your messy lifestyle or your stressful lifestyle, eliminate the clutter from your house, the clutter from your mind, the clutter from your emotions in every way and embrace a minimalist and a simple lifestyle. So I want you to create not just maybe a digital visual board, but I want you to create a physical vision board. So I did this when I first moved into this house and I bought a poster board from the dollar store and I printed out a couple things that I felt inspired me towards what I wanted to be by the end of the year or in the next couple of years. So I really think to get into the mindset of your future self or your higher self, whatever you wanna call it, you need a visual and you need to put it somewhere where you're gonna see it every day. So I actually have it like across from my bed in my bedroom, right by the door. So every time I get up, I look at it. Every time I leave the room, I look at it. Every time I come into the room, I look at it. And it's almost like it subconsciously gets you in the mindset of change and that is what I want to embrace, the future, and uh, kind of leave the old habits and the old lifestyle behind. So that's my first piece of advice, is to create a vision board. Number two is I want you to create a daily schedule. Now this is gonna change depending on um, if it's summer, if your kids are in school, if you have like a variable uh, schedule, like when I worked as a nurse, I would work night shift, day shift, 12 hour shifts, different days, different weeks. Um, so you have to find one that works for you. Maybe you'll have days that uh, your kids go to school, uh, summer days, days that you go to work, days off, and you can kind of tailor it. Right now, I'll show you. Actually, I have it right next to my computer. I have my daily schedule <laughs> that I print out every day, and um, I leave blank spaces so that I can fill out what I need to do for each day that I don't, so I don't forget anything. And I do it hour by hour, so from 5 a.m. from when I wake up to 9 p.m. when I start to like wind down and, and go to sleep and stuff. Um, I think maybe I'll just put a little PDF to this 
down below so that you guys can see it. But it starts off meditation, affirmations, coffee, vitamins, and then workout, shower, and then I open all the windows, and then I go through all of my emails, and then I do my daily or weekly content posts. So that means like on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Shorts, um, I put out my digital content for the day or my newsletter, whatever I have to do for that day. Um, and then I start on breakfast, that's around eight o'clock, my kids are starting to wake up and, and join me with the day. And then getting ready, feed the dog and give the dog extra water. Uh, then I have my smoothie and then we start homeschooling um, or they go to school. So they're like a half and half, they go to a hybrid school. Um, so they go a couple days a week and then they're home for a couple days. Um, so some days they're gone from 9 a.m. to 3.30 and then some days they're home and I have to do the homeschooling, which takes, um, uh, it's different for each kid. For my daughter, it takes four, maybe five hours depending on if she needs something that needs a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. And then my son's about three hours, sometimes four, depending on, on his work. And he's in kindergarten. So it's a lot of really basic stuff, just repetitive and getting him to practice it and things like that. So then I leave a big chunk of time that is open for homeschooling for me to finish that or for me to work on things that I need to do, emails, content creation, filming this video, stuff like that. And then um, 12 p.m. is always like my stop, get a snack, get the kids lunch if they're home, and then clean up the first floor. Um, so like the office, uh, you know, pick up any stuff that's on the living room, like I, I have a little exercise thing there that I left, um, clear the dining room and then clean the kitchen so that it's not super messy by the end of the day. Um, and then 3 p.m. is like my work time. So if it's a day that the kids are in school, I try to work from like 3 to 3.30 and finish up everything I need to do for the day. And then if they are home, it's kind of my time to say, all right, kids, go play outside, um, go watch a movie. I'm going to hop on the computer for a little bit. And then we've got dinner at 6. Um, sometimes they start cooking by 5. And then we have a family walk after dinner and then I do laundry while we like wind down and just spend time together on this couch in the living room. And then I do some stretching, meditation, and then when the kids go to bed around eight or nine is when I start to do um, a little bit of extra stuff for work, maybe um, apply to things, uh, finish up the laundry, stuff like that. So that is my day. And then anything that I need to do for the week. I have a whole list that's separate that I make on Sundays and then every morning I go through that list and I say what can I accomplish today, what is due today, and I add it to my little daily schedule. This is gonna change uh, when the kids are home for the summer and just schedules are gonna be a little bit different. Uh, but then I'll just rearrange it and then I print it out every morning and I get started. So I highly suggest that you come up with a schedule to put that vision board into action if you want to maybe start working on your body maybe carve out time to do some light exercise or some heavy exercise if you want to join a crossfit gym um, if you want to start eating healthier schedule all right i'm gonna have a smoothie in the morning and a salad for lunch every single day um, i'm going to take a vitamin every morning and i'm going to make a habit of that and do that on purpose um, start a schedule so that you can keep yourself accountable and I suggest you have a physical paper that you look at and you cross off as you do it because it's just so much more fulfilling and it, like I said, it's the accountability part of it also. Now, the biggest part of minimalism <laughs> is decluttering um, and sort of simplifying your space. And that may mean your workspace, your work cubicle, or it may mean your physical home. Now, I do want to you to give yourself time to do this. So I want you to come out with the goal of like, okay, in three weeks, I'm gonna have everything completely decluttered in this house, and then I'll have one week to kind of just catch up or uh, sell some more things. So um, everything is gonna go into three categories. It's going to be sell, so whatever you use, Craigslist, um, Facebook Marketplace, um, or a garage sale. Um, sell and then the second one is going to be donate or give away so donate to your local thrift stores or uh, foster home resources or church or thrift store whatever it is 
um, or to a friend, give away to a friend. And then the other one is toss. Sometimes you have things in your house that no one can use and they are trash and it's time to part ways with them so that they do not take over your life. So in each room, I want you to uh, separate all of the belongings into three categories. Um, this includes furniture. I like to start in the kitchen uh, just because it's one of the most used rooms and once you get that decluttered and cleaned and organized, it's so much easier to just flow into the rest of the house. But if you wanna start maybe in your bedroom, uh, that's another good place to start and I want you to start in one corner, then go to the opposite corner, then go to the next corner, then move across the room like that. Get rid of big pieces first, like furniture, if you're not using a desk or a chair or something big that's taking up room, I want you to just go, get rid of it, donate it, sell it, post a picture on Facebook Marketplace as soon as you can. It's so easy, it's like a two-step process uh, to sell stuff and just get rid of it. Then I want you to get a box. I want you to put everything into it that does not serve you, that you're not using every day, that maybe you're just keeping for a random sentimental value. Fill that box and continually fill it throughout the week. At the end of the week, close that box up, take it to Goodwill. Um, old Amazon boxes are a great um, way to like recycle them and, and use them again. So just fill them with anything you don't need in your house. That extra utensil, that little tchotchke sitting on the wall, that frame that you never really liked but it's hanging up there anyway. Get it out of your space, get it out of your house. And as soon as you start um, decluttering and living in a more simplified type of atmosphere, you're going to see how much joy it brings you. You're gonna not want to buy more and clutter the place up again. You're gonna realize, oh my gosh, how nice is this? If you've ever uh, bought a house before, this is like my first real grown up house. <laughs> um, and it's so nice to see houses without any furniture. You're like, wow, this room is so big. Wow, look how pretty the floor is. And it's so nice when there's nothing in it. And then once you fill it with all your stuff, it's like, oh wow, this room is not as big or it doesn't look as nice with all this stuff in there. Trust me, the less you have, the better. I do wanna share with you this little like minimalist mindset trick that somebody shared with me before and it is <laughs> this is so morbid but um someone was explaining how their uh mother-in-law passed and had so much stuff left and it was such a burden on all of the family to sort of like divvy up the stuff give it away sell it and even just get it out of the house so that they could uh sell the house and they said, you know, think about it. You can't take anything with you when you die. Um, why don't you focus more on the experiences and the things that you can take with you, your memories, um, vacations, uh, hiking to a new place, just experiencing life outside, having wonderful relationships. Focus on those things and don't focus so much on accumulating stuff because someone is gonna have to go through all your stuff when you pass. <laughs> So it's best to uh, try not to accumulate too much. I know that's like such a morbid way of thinking, but when my friend was telling me that story, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's crazy uh, to think of. And for some reason, just where I was in life, it really impacted me. Um, so maybe it'll impact uh, one of you that are, that are watching this. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this helps you go from messy to minimalist in 30 days. I really suggest that you have a vision board of what you want your house to look like, what you want your life to look like, what you want to look like. And then I want you to create a schedule, a schedule that involves cleaning and decluttering to kind of keep yourself accountable. And then start decluttering room by room, corner by corner. Remember those three categories, sell, donate giveaway or toss for every single room don't forget to uh, check out my website my blog megfor.com and come and find me on social media i am on instagram i'm on facebook i'm on tiktok come and find me and we can be friends I know wardrobe is a big topic when people talk about minimalism. I actually changed up my entire wardrobe 
Um, but I have a ton of videos on that. Go ahead and explore the channel and find some wardrobe videos. Actually, in one of my next videos, I'll be talking about what I learned in the pandemic about minimalism and wardrobe is a very big part of that. So definitely uh, stick around for that video. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.